Good evening. Uh, welcome to the Cortez City Council special meeting. Uh, today is Tuesday, October 26, 2021, and it's 6.30 p.m. I call this meeting to order. Uh, the first item on the agenda is a presentation on the band shell. Shall we begin on that? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. We're going to call the architect. Uh, stand at the microphone, please. Make, okay. um, make sure we can hear you so it's recorded. Okay. Please. Thank you. Testing, testing. <laughs> all right, can you hear us all right? I can hear you, yeah. Uh, hi, Jim. This is uh, Mayor Levy. Uh, uh, we're having the special council meeting tonight, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you tonight. Uh, Thank you. Bob, Bob Wagner is here also. So we're going to have a discussion on the presentation of the band shell. Um, Do you want to begin, Bob? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jim and I are here tonight, not so much for a presentation, but to answer council's questions. Um, Linda forwarded in your packet a few paragraphs from me that, that sort of summarizes where we are with this. And Jim, our architect sent down, I think they're also in your packet, uh, a number of images that, con that, that comprise a concept sketch, which is kind of an architect's term for, this is the basic idea of what we're talking about. So you already have all that stuff, and we'd just like to answer your questions about this. We, we've kicked this can down the road a long ways. And we really would like to either get serious about moving this idea forward or not. And that's, that's what we want to do here tonight. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Uh, are there any questions to begin with from the council? Okay. I, um, I, would you like to listen to the architect's uh, presentation first? Um, I don't think he has a presentation. Okay, he's just going to answer questions. He's, going, he's here to help answer questions that I can't. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, anyone have any beginning comments? Um, so from the last time that you are here, one of the questions was about the conflict between the proposed library expansion and to be able to provide enough parking for both. Um, has there been any change to the architectural plans to adjust to that? Well, the, the image that you have, um, the, I think it's page two of the images that Jim put in your packet. You can, you can see the proposed expansion to the library, and you can also see a suggested library parking lot expansion in that image. And you can see that neither of them conflict with that white circle on the drawing, which is an estimated area that would be needed if we had up to 500 people attend a concert. Um, we don't expect that to happen very often, but it could happen. And so, so if you look at that image, um, you, you don't see a conflict there between the library expansion and the proposed uh, audience area for the band shell. Well, my understanding was from the previous time you were here that the conflict was around providing enough parking for both. And I don't see any parking for the band shell on this, at least in these drawings. Well, that's right. And there's been discussion about parking. And, 
And Tracy Hughes is here. She's, she has some thoughts about parking, and you might ask her what they are. Um, our thinking on this is there are currently three outdoor performance venues in Cortez right now. There's the Cultural Center, there's the Stage in Veterans Park, and there's the new very handsome covered stage in Montezuma Park. And there's no off-street parking for any of them. And there's abundant street parking around, around this site that we're looking at on Montezuma Avenue, on River Street. Um, the events that would happen at the band shell would be when the library is closed. The, it, which we're thinking about Saturday night concerts and perhaps Sunday afternoon shows of other kinds. But the library's not open on the weekend, so their parking lot would be available for, for band shell, uh, like for the, for the players, the, the, the band that comes in and sets up early, they could, they could park in the library parking lot. But there's lots and lots of on-street parking. Um, well, we did an evaluation of the parking availability within the street, understanding that a lot of parking that used throughout the country has been developed as a means for cultural interest in community gatherings. And understanding that, we did an assessment and found that within an eighth of a I got a question. Well, what's the square footage of this building? Uh, about 3,200. Um, so one of the other questions I had, you just listed, you just listed the other facility, like outdoor music facilities in our community that are, there, I mean, there's three already. Um, I, I don't know that I see the, that I see the utility of adding a fourth and and then the the associated cost with maintaining it and everything else for okay well that's a terrific question and thank you for asking the um, the structure that we're proposing and you can tell that if you look um, uh, page three I think of your images there the stage the stage that we're proposing is 50 feet wide in the front and it tapers slightly so that it's about 40 feet wide at the back and it's about 40 feet deep. This is big enough to seat a concert band or a, the San Juan Symphony. We don't have anything even close to that in the other three sites. Probably more importantly than the size of the stage is the notion of what a band shell is. And if you, if you read what I sent out, a band shell does two things for the musicians. 
First of all, it helps the musicians hear one another so that they hear across the group. And then the second thing the band shell does is project that collective sound out toward the audience. So if, you're, if you have an, what's called an acoustic group, that is a group that's playing violins and, and brass and drums, they, you don't need amplifiers for them because the band shell projects the collective sound of the group out into the audience. That doesn't mean we can't have a, a group with amplifiers and loudspeakers. You can still do that, but if you have a band or an orchestra that doesn't, then the band shell serves the purpose of amplifying and directing the sound toward the audience. So, so size is part of the answer to your question, and acoustics is the second part of the answer to your question. Um, so my more serious concern is really about the long-term financial impacts for the city of, of taking on another facility. I don't, um, I, I don't see how without, without a plan or a nonprofit or some sort of organization that is gonna manage and maintain and book and do all of the work that I don't see how the city can just say, thanks for the building. I, I, budget wise, looking at our budget, I know that we can't do that. We can't afford to maintain a building for into perpetuity. We've, we've seen that with other projects in the past with, with murals, with things like that. And there are, there's legacy costs and without a plan for that, I just don't see how this can go forward personally. That's my, kind of my take on the, on the, the process, the project. Well, the costs that we, that we imagine will be associated with doing this, I, I think are predominantly in the first year when, when the series, the weekly series of concerts is when we have to promote it. We have to let the community know what's gonna happen and there will be some fairly minor costs associated with that but then I think there are ways to pay for the musicians subsequently that wouldn't involve the city hiring musicians. I think there are some alternative schemes. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, just to clarify, I'm not, like the city wouldn't be doing the booking. I'm not really concerned about that side of it. I'm more concerned about just ongoing maintenance, electricity, all the things that go into running a, a facility. Um, without without a group that is there to run this facility, I don't think it would be appropriate for the city to just take on that responsibility. Well, I just think we need to be more specific than that. Electricity, electricity to turn the lights on in this building for a three-hour concert would maybe cost five dollars, probably less. So I, I, we're not talking about big money here. And there would definitely be a volunteer group that would come in and would open the building up in advance of the concert and stay around long enough to close it after, it's, after the concert is over. So unless you have some specific costs that you're worried about, I don't know how to answer your question. Okay, well, I, I mean, I guess I suppose that sort of does answer my question, is that there isn't that preparation for the long-term expense of managing a 3,200-square-foot 3, building. But what are the expenses you're talking about? Maintenance, policing. I mean, there's, there, it's the same as if you were managing any other building in town. Like, it requires upkeep. Well, there's no plumbing in this building, so there's no... It's, it's, it requires less upkeep than the bathrooms in the, in the, current, in the city park. We, there's no plumbing to drain. The electricity will all be LED lights. Um, I, I, I just need to know specifically what kind of maintenance you're talking about. This building, and, and you can ask Jim, he's on the phone. You can ask him yeah. about high, the, the kind of maintenance costs that'll be associated with this structure.
I'd like to make a comment. <clears throat> um, so I've seen several iterations of this map over time. Um, one of the map versions actually had the library parking lot expanding out well past um, the band shell to accommodate the future library expansion. Um, so I'm not certain how this additional piece was configured um, in this most recent diagram. Um, but I also wanted to ask, because I recall us requesting um, you all to follow up with Tracy and to figure out how it could make it work. I wonder if that, did that conversation ever happen? Did you guys ever end up going to um, speak with Tracy about this plan and how well, it might work? Yeah, after our last uh, presentation in April, uh, Jim, Jim called, called Tracy and asked her what the next steps were in her, in her view that we needed to take to, to sort of merge our effort with the city staff. And she said that she had two concerns and she can verify this, she's here. She, she was concerned about parking as it relates to city code 5.02. And, and if you know or don't know what that is, it stipulates the amount of off-street parking for a number of different kinds of buildings that, that might be built in town. Uh, apartment buildings, churches, schools. But the thing about code 5.02 is it doesn't mention outdoor performance venues. So we we took Tracy's direction and looked at the code and frankly we didn't find what, in, what was in the code that was concerning to Tracy. And maybe, maybe you should bring Tracy up at this point to answer that question. Answer some questions? <laughs> no problem. Okay. Well, so with, with regards to section 5.02, it, it's a, you know, a, a grid of parking. And so it's, it's not specific to every single <clears throat> use you could ever imagine. So you have to kind of fit the uses into categories listed there. At the end of the day, you have to ask the question, you know, if I go in this direction, is 10 spaces appropriate for a potential audience of 500 people? Or is, you know, 100 spaces? Bases appropriate for a potential audience of 500 people. Um, and that's, you know, that's my understanding of the potential audience of the band shell that may not be 100% accurate, but I'm not suggesting that we overbuild parking. I just think you need to consider that because it is directly across the street. It's directly across Park Street from a residential neighborhood. And I think taking that into consideration what happens if we don't address parking and those folks are now parking you know, on those streets over in that neighborhood or just all over the place on Park Street. So I think that's really where we're at. You know, which, which section of the code do we apply? Because one's not gonna be enough parking by far and one which would be to consider an outdoor amphitheater as a theater, whether it's inside or outside. You're still talking about seats what's your intended audience, and then dividing that number by four, and that's how many parking spaces you would need. So does that clear that up at all? Yeah. yeah. He said you had two concerns. Was that, did you mesh those two together, or was there another one? Um, I think the concern was the neighborhood, okay. and then where are people gonna park? I mean, they're kind of not just the same concern, because also, you know, what, what is the impacts of large gatherings in that part of the city look like for that neighborhood? And it's not necessarily a problem, it's just something I think needs to be explored. Yeah. Um, well, an another thought that I have around this, sorry, I'm, yeah. <laughs> um, I think I'd rather expand an existing asset than add another one when we've got three. We have three working assets, so. That's my thoughts on that. So um, <clears throat> I know that I wasn't on council. I think everybody else pretty much was when this first came about. Um, I <clears throat> really like the idea a lot. And um, 
I'm really impressed with the fact that Friends of the Banshell got together to raise the funds for um, the construction of it. And I do hear what you're saying in terms of the uh, size of the stage and acoustics. You can even kind of see that in design, and I really don't know a lot about acoustics, but it seems like that uh, would be beneficial for um, a band. Um, so I, I really do not have a problem with this. The only thing I probably would say if I had been on council at the time would be more of a question if the Friends of the Band show um, <clears throat> plans on existing after the construction of the band show, um, would they then maybe take on Let's say, and this probably isn't realistic, but let's say, you know, 10 years from now it needs a coat of paint or stain or something like that on the outside. If that friends group would either maintain uh, an account of any leftover funds to help do that or maybe even contract out to have someone come in and do that work on the band trail because I, I really don't have a lot of opposition to this at all. Um, I would just maybe have made that suggestion. So it, do you, is the Friends of the Band show going to be in existence after the construction or would it dissolve at that point? I, I think we're gonna be in existence. The conversations that we've had around that uh, have to do mostly with contracting with performers. Um, sort of previewing performers before we hire them and then contract with them probably in February or March for the upcoming summer so that we can prepare posters and we can get on social media and, and promote the summer's concert series. And I think, we haven't talked about this, but I, I have a hunch that the Friends of the Banshell would be eager to to clean up the space after a concert and even walk around the audience area and pick up, you know, there's bound to be some popcorn bags left behind. And that, that I think you can absolutely count on this group doing those kinds of things. There, there hasn't been any conversation about um, painting the building. I mean, I'm not even sure that, the, and, and Jim's still on the phone. I'm not even sure that the surfaces on the outside of this building are paintable. I think they may be more durable than that. But uh, yes, in answer to your question, Matt, the, the group is going to continue and is going to play a role in how this whole thing works. Uh, I have one uh, point. Uh, it seems like one of the stumbling blocks in moving this forward is the, the raising funds uh, it, it sounds like you've raised enough funds to hire an architect and uh, to uh, pay him for his uh, work. Uh, but the, 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 the rest of the funding, uh, it sounds like it, you're depending on the, the, the okay from the city council to go ahead with the project. Uh, but it sounds like you're, you're wanting to, to get that first before you start actively pursuing the funding. Uh, or could you um, clarify that, Bob? Well, well, what you've just said is correct. We th we're going to try to raise a, a lot of money. This, this structure could easily cost a half a million dollars. And before we can get um, a sponsor, I mean, we've talked about selling naming rights to this building or going to big philanthropic organ. There is There actually is a family... Uh, in the U.S. that builds this kind of structure. And, and since it's going to end up being built on city land and end up being owned by the city, it's kind of pointless to approach a potential funder unless we actually have full authorization from the city to use their property to build this thing. And the other thing was we really couldn't approach a potential funder until we had these, these uh, concept sketches that you're looking at in your packet. No, one, no one's going to contribute $200,000 to a building that they have no idea what it's going to look like. So the, the architect's work to get us to this point had to precede 
the idea of going out and looking for big philanthropic donors on this. Ha had you considered um, Veterans Park, this place where the stage is, kind of um, expanding that into the band shell? Because then you'd get the parking from the outdoor pool and the welcome center. It'd kind of be out of the residential neighborhood. Um, the only thing that you wouldn't have is like road access for them to drive up and unload. Well, you may recall, we're, I don't know if you were here last April when we, when we went through the other sites that we've looked I, at. I think that was right before the election. Well, I, I don't think so. But um, in any case, the problem with the Veterans Park site is the highway. You, you, it's, it's almost impossible to imagine having concerts of acoustic instruments with trucks driving by on the highway. And there's also noise from the swimming pool. If the concerts, if the concerts during swimming pool hours, you've got noise coming from the pool. So even though the site has a nice slope to it, um, the acoustically it's it's awful, and and it okay. and it's distracting. Um, so I mean, if we let's imagine we're having a play, and you're trying to listen to what the actors are saying on stage and trucks are going by, uh, it, it's, it's really an incompatible site. Okay. Yeah, I just like to add to that, Jim. Um, we, we do have a call for a crucial consultant uh, engineer for the previous way in that various site uh, modifications to this project. And that was uh, a negative. I was just wondering when you mentioned the amount of money they're going to be putting in this building. I mean, that's a lot of money to raise too. But <clears throat> in like everybody's opinion here on the maintenance and uh, taking care of it. So this building, the amount of money you're going to be putting in it, you're probably going to be using it two or three months out of the year. So what happens in between then, those excess months? Who's going to maintain it? To well, it'll be closed. If you look at if you look at the drawings, uh, I think it's page four. This. This building ha has a front closure system. There, there, there won't be anybody in this building. There's no way into it in the off season. So no one's going to be trying to sleep in there because there's not going to be a place to sleep. And it, it's clo the front closes and, and the back, the doors all close. Yeah, the reason I mentioned that, I did see those sketches there, but the reason I mentioned that is the security on it. Well, like you say, you can close it or whatever, but who's going to maintain the keep security on it? Is that going to be our officers? Well, I assume that, you know, the same security people that watch the picnic shelters and watch the bathrooms and everything else that's in the park, um, the same security people do those things. Any other questions? Okay. I don't. I um, and I know. It, I feel like we've really grilled you, and we even pulled Tracy up here and and pulled somebody in online. I personally, um, you know, granted I wasn't here before, but I would give a thumbs up to moving forward on it. I I think it's a great idea. I think it's needed. I do think it does serve a, a different purpose than the other venues. Um, and living close to the one on Montezuma, uh, it, it is a different situation. It's a different um, band shell, for sure. So as far as my opinion goes, I would give it a, a thumbs up. I think it's a really good idea. And I'm, like I said before, I'm impressed with the fact you guys have been uh, organized around it and trying to raise money. And the design really looks beautiful. Well, I, I think I'm out of time, but I'd just like to point out 
to all of you who are who are just demonstrating legitimate concerns about finances and such music in the park is one of the most well established uh, American traditions that we have and I'm not exaggerating when I say there are literally hundreds of communities across the country large and small that have summer music in the park and it doesn't result in economic calamity I, I, I think we're just as smart as all these other towns we have we have the opportunity to figure out exactly how we're going to uh, hire the bands and how we'll do a little maintenance if it becomes necessary 25 years from now. But, but this, it, we're not breaking ground here. Um, I, saw, I stumbled across a California website one time. They have 200, in the state of California, they have 200 summer music programs in communities across the state of California. And I myself have played in, I think, four different band shells in the upper Midwest when, when I lived there and was raising my family there. Summer music in the park is, is not some sort of mysterious and complex notion. It's done all over the place and I'm just saying we can do it here in Cortez and we can enrich summer life here in Cortez. It's hard to imagine that it's impossible to do here. So that's part of my argument is let's enrich community life. There's probably not been a time recently when we've, when we've needed to bring our community together more than we need to do that right now. And, and shared music is one of the well-established ways that people come together. So that's the picture, we, that's the vision we have, is, is having an enriched summer life here in Cortez. That's what we're shooting okay. for. And, and we, we really need to decide, you need to decide whether you want us to proceed with this idea or give up. But it's, it's time to make a decision here. Okay. Well, well thank you very much, Jim. Uh, we appreciate your sharing your visions with us. And uh, thank you, Mr. Keogh, for participating tonight. Uh, we appreciate your input. Okay. Thank you all. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, is there any general council discussion? On what? Do we, I mean, do we want to make a decision tonight about this or do we want to, it is already on the agenda, okay, okay, never mind. Okay, well, are, are we still open on the Banshell discussion or was that closed? Uh, general discussion. Okay. I just wanted to say that I'm, I, <clears throat> music, as you said, is a part that we're missing because there's no plan B right now. And, then, <clears throat> and they need a venue, and music is one of the popular arts throughout the country. And I think we need to join the ranks. Thank you. Uh, tonight we have a special guest, uh, Judge Jim Shaner is in, in the council chambers tonight, and uh, I understand he's getting ready to retire. And um, we'd like to make a presentation. Uh, we have a, a cake over there, I believe, and uh, we'd like to recognize the many years that you served as municipal judge, Mr. Shaner, or Judge Shaner. Uh, we accept, please accept our Thank you for your, for your hard work and dedication for all these years. Uh, I just don't know how we can thank you as much. Um, uh, any other comments from the council? Uh, we're gonna uh, break now and uh, celebrate uh, Judge Shaner's uh, retirement. Thank you.
Yeah, you better take a picture. It's not going to last very long. How are you? Good. 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 Good.
Uh, good evening. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a presentation to Judge Shainer. Uh, we'll go over to the cake area, the presentation area. Uh, okay, go ahead. I think on the council, the only person I knew before today or had met was Orly, so it's nice to see all of you finally. So uh, I guess fortunately I didn't have to appear uh, in front of you before, so this is a good occasion uh, to meet all of you. So thank you very much for your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 